Hi, it's Tony Saving to watching Motherland Fort Salem season two, episode three, Epiphany. I don't know if that's meant to be like a play on Epiphany or if that means something, but I have been loving this season. I love this show so much. It just makes me so happy and I'm watching it even when I get stressed or sad or whatever and I just cannot wait to see where this episode continues to take us and our lovely girls. A reminder that as always you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon. There is also currently a Patreon poll um, on a new show for me to watch. Motherland Fort Salem originally came on my channel through via a poll because it was voted in. I'm very, very glad it did so if you're at all interested all tiers can vote my Patreon but for now let's go. It is the duty of every witch to report for military service. She's no exception. This isn't right. Oh you think it's okay? for all the young witches that are forced to do it. That's right, but not for your daughter. <laughs> yeah, they're controlling her again. That's what that was. I didn't think they'd be so bold as to do it in person. It's so obvious as well that she's being puppeted. I hate this. It's also very dangerous because it could turn the military and everybody against which it is. Does the president believe like she doesn't notice it happens? She just kind of thinks, oh no, I had a change of heart and just goes with it? I can't stop thinking about that redacted soldier from the photo. Old Tally. Our outcross. The fixer of the rebellious streak. <sighs> What's an outcross? It means your mom cross lives with this village. Ugh. Narrowing down your choices of the men who will be part of furthering your line. Do they how quick? Just how soon do they have to have babies? I know your place. I will not stand here while you impugn my authority to appease your ego. I Ooh, someone that. Ooh, how? I thought Alda was the head of all the witches here. Very good at getting people to see things your way. Oof, yep. Good day, Gemma. She knows exactly what you did. I think everyone does, kind of. Why won't it do anything? Her. Not. <laughs> does Rael have to kind of bond with it, with her, somehow? To the mushroom. I'm very scared of the mushroom. I would be kind of scared about giving the mushroom what it wants. Because it could take over her, right? Is, is that what it wants, to kind of possess her? I don't trust the mushroom. I trust Rael. Oh god. Yep. Oh god, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Skills help us win the battle, but breeding lets us win the war, dear. God. You're a prejudiced bitch. Like let people. Gregorio Shellbark? Pass. Hmm. You are the earthquake boy. How do you? I have eyes and ears everywhere. He's powerful. Of a new line. In the military, your hand fasting will take place at the end of this year. Oh my god! I hate how they can force her. Like they think they can just force her to have a child. That's your top secret military experiment. Hmm. Oh, and she's reliving Alder's greatest battles, and me, well, I don't even get to choose who the father of my children is going to be. Well, does it help anything that neither of us can do what we've been doing on purpose? <laughs> A little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until I melted the priceless stained glass windows with Satan's high seat. <laughs> so my dad's face changed. Oh. Went from... Oh. She is very powerful in seven years bad luck. Hmm. It's a good thing the army doesn't kill normal people. <laughs> Those spree do though. Yep, she's standing right next to one. I had to tell Brianna she can't play with her friend Tiffany anymore. A Tiffany? They found out she's a witch. How? I don't know what we'd do if we wound up with a Tiffany. <sighs> Oof. Yep. She seems so approachable and so much likable, but she's still got such prejudice in there. I used to working alone. That's my issue. Not anymore. Right. <laughs> These two. Perhaps there's opportunity for an outcross to bloom after. <sighs> I'm not interested in hand fasting. 
So they have to have kids. Your mother did not hand back just like she did. Right. Nah, I can't eat. I understand this woman is being so prejudiced about so much for only speaking a couple of words in the mouth in the mother tongue. <laughs> She's a lot of frustration right now. She will happily take it out on you. Oof. What the hell? She's having a vision while awake? Oh. What did Alda do? They're my serial friends. Oh my goodness. Real. We need every, every weapon for what's coming. Because she's a person too. They're capable of. It's true, and she will do it because it's the right thing. But remember, she's a person too. Oh, her eyes! Oh my god! Whoa, Riel is capable of a lot. Oh, Riel, I love you. Yeah, at least you have something that sets you apart other than your womb. Abigail. Maybe I'll skip to you. Maybe I've decided I want more for myself. Exactly. It's horrible that they have no choice and they're forced you to do it. Feel like you're living with somebody else. You just need to enjoy yourselves with some pretty boys. You just view this as a party. The Though Abigail has been told that she has to get married time after this year, which means the babies have to come. Obviously, it's for the bloodlines, and I understand they need to keep making witches, but especially if they're finding more, do we really need to? Need to? Oh my god. Oh, he's undoing our magic. Run. Let me know if you get any Oof. They're testing children for themselves. Why? Is this so they can? I mean, are they going to target children? Or do they want to brainwash children before they get to the army? She stopped a battle cold with a working that no one had ever seen before. And no witch has been able to successfully repeat. She wants that kind of power be for herself. Being defined by them is something else entirely. Well, that's kind of the basis of tradition though, isn't it? So so yeah, she's not in the mood for this. Already? If Jem made a working that could stop it then. Oh, Abigail. Maybe it's time for another bellwether to build a working. That is a... One that could end a war. Oof. That's non-canon, that's illegal, I guess. Is Abigail gonna do something reckless that's gonna tie in with like the visions Tally's having? Also, don't tell anyone what I'm doing. Well you haven't told me <laughs> so it shouldn't be that hard. Oh Tally, I love you. I've never seen anything like it. Good. Hmm. Don't pressure them. <laughs> Oof. Mm. Who are you? Want to know who we are, Camaria? Yes. Not so cocky now. This is hell on earth. The pressure that, like, you all have to marry someone, or at least, you know, I know it's not forever, but you have to sleep, make babies with people here. Oh, Tally. Hmm. I do like him, but I get that. And Abigail's anger isn't at him; it's at being forced to be told she should be with him. Just come down with some sort of a <sighs> nasty bug. And I hope you'll have good news to bring back. Is that side effects of the puppeting? I don't trust this man, especially because he's turning on his own daughter. I so think the vice president's the head of the Camarilla, and I hate that he's here watching this. He knows about Rael. She's doing it.
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. She's like spreading the mycelium, is that what it wants? I trust Rayella, I don't know that I trust the mushrooms. And he's scared that the witches have a new power, which means Rayella's in danger. Uh, we read different books. <laughs> oh god. You stole my work! It had to be done. You know that. They already surrendered. Your oh. is black, Sarah. Oh god, so she was the first spree attack, essentially. Oh, I'm so scared Tally has knows all the dark secrets. Oh god, are you okay? My loves. And that redacted soldier, her name is Nikita. I'm so glad they've shared everything. I blew up a shitload of stuff in front of the vice president. Hmm. Brass from the egg. What? Yeah. Abigail, you can't force things. You are brilliant and capable of so much more than just being a mother. Making a mother's wonderful, but like, you're capable of so more than just protect, project, making babies, but... Abigail, I love you. Be careful, please. Oh my goodness. Abigail! Abigail! What did you do? It's killing her, it's too much. Has she damaged her vocal cords? Abigail! Sweetheart. Turn it in the episode, please. Please don't. I want to watch more. Okay, that was fantastic. Um, this episode, every show, every every episode of this show is fantastic. So the ending, Abigail is struggling with being, as she sees it, like the least interesting one, or like you know the least important and powerful one. Now, I disagree thoroughly. Me saying that does not mean I believe it, but I just know Abigail, especially being a bellwether, being first of all being brought up, always told you are the best. Now go be the best. But that combined with. Um, her kind of realising now that she doesn't want to just be a bellwether, you know, various things that when her cousin told her, oh, you're of getting into war college, you're a bellwether, and she wanted to earn it. I think it's that combined with her desire to make a name for herself and to prove that she's good, regard like, she's not good because of her name, she's good despite it. Um, and then being faced with the other two girls in her unit being important and special and, you know, kind of having all this stuff going on which she doesn't have. And then on top of all of that, you get this woman coming in and saying, yeah, by the way, you need to start making babies this year, okay? Um, your whole future is planned for you. Your line's fla failing, so we need you to have 100 babies. Go. That would just set you off, and I do not blame her for taking drastic measures. I wish she had talked about it more with Tally or with Ariel or with anybody about what she was doing, what she was planning. I'm scared that she might have, like, damaged her vocal cords which might make her weaker or something like I, I don't think the show will do that to Abigail but it might be like if you'd have done it for much longer it would have done I think like that must be a danger surely with doing too much magic because she was bleeding like from her mouth which suggests that like I don't know how it all works but I'm stressed for her sake um you can't force things like that I imagine I mean did the bell ever die that day but I imagine you need to work up to it you need to kind of keep training and training and I mean we know Abigail is brave, courageous, smart, she is a talented, talented witch. She will do great things. It doesn't have to be right now at the beginning of War College, but I can see why Abigail will be is struggling the way she is. I hope for her sake she's able to come to terms with the fact that maybe she's not the super great weapon that Rael is and Tally's linked to all there's nothing to be happy about. It's going to put her in a hell of a lot of danger at this rate. So for Abigail's sake, I hope she's able to settle a little bit. The whole concept of the bloodlines and the hand fasting and like you have to do it. Now the idea that they're telling that they have a timetable of when they are supposed to make these babies, it's horrible. It really, really is. I can understand it from a logistical point of view of our lines are dwindling. We don't have as many witches as we want. Therefore, if we want to keep our lines going, every girl needs to have a lot of babies but it's also just so 
clinical and brutal when they talk about it like that you know there's no magic and fun and finding someone and when you have a spark you get to hand with them for three years and try and make some babies or anything like that I also feel like surely they could I don't know I mean okay it would still be invasive medical procedures but can't they like take the eggs and surrogate them to make babies that the girl have to do it I mean maybe there would be women who would be there are people who have surrogates anyway, so maybe there are people that for a lot of money would be quite happy to do that, I don't know. Does it have to be so cold? And kind of like saying to Abigail, I'll call you a war collar, who cares, you're a bellwether, make, bell make us bellwether babies. I feel awful for her with that and kind of as well the fact that, that it was like not only do you have to do it right now but we want you to do it with him or at the very least him or him. So awful and clinical. From like I said, so much of the army that I disagree with, from a general's point of view looking down makes sense you need the bloodlines to keep making the soldiers to keep making witches you need um the girls to keep having babies you need conscription because you need people in the army and if you don't conscript them a lot of them probably won't join although a lot of them will because of the propaganda of it all and trying to do the right thing but conscription is wrong in every sense every world and forcing people to have babies is also wrong especially such young girls they're what like 19 and already putting this burden on them that you must have babies. People struggle with fertility, people struggle with all sorts of things, plus they just might not want kids. And then kind of talking about it like that with genuinely no empathy that this might be a difficult subject, whether it's because you've just had your heart broken or you're young and you're inexperienced or you're gay or you don't want to have babies right now, you want to be able to have a great career. Like there are so many different aspects to it that I think even if they make them do it, treat them like they're people and not just baby popping machines. I feel like in this episode, Abigail was kind of treated a bit like she literally was just a baby maker and Rael was treated like she was just a weapon to an extent. Um, so I can see why they have to do it this way, but hopefully the discovery of the new witches, if there are enough of them, like if they're like five, it's not gonna make a difference. Yes, that's five bloodlines we can bring in, but it's not gonna make a difference. But if there are lots and lots of them, which, given that they seem to be doing testing in schools, suggests that maybe there is, there are, sorry, I can do grammar, lots of them, it doesn't matter as much. Like, yes, it would be a shame for the noble bell with a line and the legacy it maintains to end. But which kind wouldn't really notice um, if there were ten other witch houses rising? You know, I think... It's this real, like, pure blood, like in Harry Potter, I feel like that lady would be Slytherin and she'd be like, pure blood, oh, you're a muggle-born, oh, he's a half-blood. You know, that kind of calling them cross, oh, off-grid, off-cross, oh, I can't remember what the term was now, that they have for people who weren't purely bred. It's just, oh, they just set your teeth on edge, especially because, like, Riel is epically powerful, and she was before she touched the mushroom. <laughs> she was just as, she had her amazing powers of fixing or healing or whatever they call it before she touched any old mushroom. So it doesn't matter. And Tally is very powerful despite growing up in an unconventional way from them in her matriarchal society. Just, it doesn't sit, and I know it's not meant to sit right with you. So of course, like I know that that's the whole point, but it just, it's icky. And they're kind of devaluing these people and being told like here are the 20 people you must have a baby with it's weird um like i can totally understand the need for it and why they do it but it's weird so for abigail i'm worried about her because she's struggling i'm hoping there's not gonna be any permanent damage or she's not gonna get in any permanent trouble or anything with what happened i hope that it's kind of just gonna be a thing that she did and that if she is serious about wanting to try to create some new work that she takes it slowly because you can't just decide Tonight I'm going to make some new work and go and do it. It will take thinking and practicing, testing, oh could I mix this seed with this seed, like all that kind of thing. I, I don't know what's the logistics of it, but it would take a lot of work. Um, and it is potentially dangerous if you create something epically powerful when it gets into the wrong hands, as happened with Nikta, I think her name was. So then we have Tally. I felt so bad for her being just abandoned to go to the function on her own. Oh, do the awful. And like, that's not even just, you know, you go into like a dance and you kind of expect to dance with some people. That is like, in this room, your fa the father of your children, or at least a child, is here. Oh, that's just so much pressure, so much expectation. Um, I'm glad you had Gregory or Gregorio um because he is a good guy. I really like him. And I get that like Abigail venting her anger on him. It was because she, like, People want her to marry him and she doesn't really have a choice in the matter um but i think for tally's sake that was a lot 
she is such a kind, caring, wonderful person, but I would hate that situation, especially without my two wingwomen. Um, and then not only that, but she's now collapsed in front of everybody, so are they going to be, well, there's a lot going on. Now with Tally and her visions of Alder, she saw blood on the blade. Did Alder kill someone? Did Alder kill Nicta? Um, the last vision, I feel like Nic Nicta said, they're killing themselves, they're killing themselves, they, you stole my work, you did this or whatever. So obviously her work does cause, take control of people and cause them to do things. Now that is exactly what the spree does. The spree puts her working it in a container, pops it, breaks it, then people kill themselves. Um, it's obviously on a battlefield as it was intended for Nicta. It is used to kill bad guys. It's a good way to, you know, keep yourself safe while the bad guys finish, finish themselves off. But obviously that work that she intended for just life and death moments, she intended to just use against their evil enemies, is now being, has been co-opted by the spree. Now did Alda create the spree? Was that it? Because you know, her saying it had to be done. Was there a situation where the public and the people were starting to turn against witches or start saying we don't need them anymore, we're at peace, you know, we why do we need the army? We don't need the army, fuck witches, we don't need it. And so by creating this witch enemy that therefore if it's witches, only witches can face them, she kind of made, kept her own grip on power and on the witches and that's caused a lot of lives. Or was it the case that Alda just used it against people that had to, like, people that uh, Nicta didn't agree with and then Nicta left to found the spree. Um, but no matter what, given that this has been heavily redacted and hidden, Tally having this information scares me. Um, Alder scares me. As much as I think they're doing a better job this season of showing more of a human element to her or more kind of that she does care, I still think as much as she cares she would sacrifice every single one of these young women in a heartbeat, but um, she's not quite as sort of cold and awful. I still don't agree with her being the sole person in charge, but then there's also this mate chart woman who doesn't respond to her. Like, I just, I'm very intrigued about the power hierarchies here, but I'm scared of what Alda might do when she knows what Tally knows. Um, ideally, sit down and explain the whole situation, but I'm scared. I don't know that Tally, does she have any idea Tally's experiencing this? Because surely the first time when it caused her harm, they'd have noticed that? They'd have, or did she not report it? I'm scared, basically. And for Tally as well, to be experiencing such awful things stresses me out. Then we have Riel and the her abilities, and she is like, she spoke to it, it responded and was like, this sound please, and then it tried to choke her, I don't know. It has changed her vocal cords, and that is scary because you kind of think, if it if she decides she's never going to use it again, or she it, she decides oh this is actually dangerous, I'm not I I need it out of me. Could it turn on her? Could it control her vocal cords somehow? Like make her do work when she doesn't want to? I'm scared about mycelium because it's huge and it's very very powerful, and we don't know what it wants. <laughs> um, so it is stressful. I'm glad it protects Riel, but what is its ulterior motive? She is epically powerful now, she's learning to control it, she's getting stronger with it, and that makes me happy because I'm like, yes, Rael, you do this, you win, you can keep everyone safe that I care about, but I am scared because we don't truly know the origins of the mycelium, and also the scientist lady is definitely very jealous of Rael. Um, I don't know what, the, does the mushroom want to colonize the planet, take over the world? I, I'm scared about the mushroom, basically, and what it could do to Rael going forwards, but I think she's such an interesting, interesting character to give this to because she is the one that, if it was not conscription, she 100% wouldn't have gone. Tally obviously would have gone because she kind of wanted, because she wanted to, she wanted to be part of something bigger than herself and help people, like she said. And Abigail would have done because it was what expect, what was expected of her, and because you know that's what bellwethers do. And even though maybe now she might have been thinking, oh, I wish I'd done it, she would have been, she would have done it because that's who she was at the time. Um, so Riel is the one that is least gung-ho about the army. She's come around to it more, but it's so interesting to see her be the one having all these one-on-ones with Alda who she does not trust and does not like. Um, I'm glad in a way it's with her because I think part of when she said to the Mushroom War, oh, Abigail would have loved this. Abigail definitely would have done, but also, and she would have been much more content with the testing, like, you know, she'd gone along with it. But also Abigail would have been less likely to question a dodgy order. Now I do think Abigail would question a dodgy order, but I think she would feel far more of the pressure to do as Alder wants to be a good soldier. 
especially if her mother was there, etc. Whereas someone like Rael, who has an inherent suspicion of the army and its rules, she will use it, she will protect people, she will fight against their enemies because their enemies are bad, are doing terrible things, but she won't, I hope, easily, I mean, I know, she won't easily be swayed by order, and I hope she's never in that kind of situation, but Abigail might find it more of a struggle because it's been just so bred into her that you follow order, you do as you're told, yes ma'am, no ma'am, like, stress. Then, um the Anacostia and Scylla and the Camarilla people, they've been testing in schools for a very long time. That is stressful. Partly because it's children. Why are they going after children? Is it because if you find a witch child, then you can go after the parent, like any of their mothers and sisters and aunts who are adults? Or are they hurting children as well? Um, it's very scary to think how widespread this has been and how unnoticed it has been. Their plan, they now have a guy who is part of the testing program, but what are they going to do with him? Because Anacostia, I don't think this is, she doesn't, from what she said to Scylla, she's not doing this officially. Now, maybe she lied to Scylla because that's the only way Scylla would work with her, but I don't know, does everyone think she's just taken a couple of weeks off on a holiday? I don't, what, I suppose it's the new season of new recruits hasn't started yet, so she's having holiday time, I don't know. But they can't take her really, him, to the army. I doubt they'll take him to the spree because um, Anacostia would want to go there and they wouldn't want her there. So it's intriguing to see what they're going to do with this guy, especially now he knows their faces, he knows that those are the people that were with his friends and it's very stressful. Um, I think it was really good that we had the wife because the wife so far has been, I can't remember her name, but she's been more sympathetic. You know, she's clearly not a happy marriage. He's very controlling and abusive, it seems. And you could kind of think, oh, is this being forced on her? But the way she went, oh, I don't know what we'd do if we had a Tiffany. You know, that wasn't any of what he'd do. Or it was kind of just her genuinely being like, oh, yeah, me having a witch as a daughter would be the worst thing in the world. Now, for me, if I was in that kind of situation where it was like, I would be terrified of my daughter being conscripted. Um, although, actually, I probably would be of recruitable age myself. But, you know, if I was in this situation and I had a daughter who was in her... Any daughter, I would be scared that if they were a witch, they would be conscripted and they would be forced to fight and see horrific things and potentially die. So that would scare me, but then being a witch wouldn't scare me. It would be what that meant. But it didn't seem like that for her. And it was a good telling reminder that while she is more sympathetic, she is still believing in this rhetoric and she still buys into it. And I do wonder if we're going to learn that whatever Alder did got it into the hands of the spree, this new magic, or like I said, she created it, and this is kind of her fault, but not her, but not what she intended. I think she genuinely does mean well. I think that's what Tally sensed when they were linked. But meaning well, you can mean well and then hurt a lot of people, but, you know, the end game was good, so it's okay. Stress. I feel like I probably missed something, but this... Ugh. Oh, then puppet, they're still puppeting the president. That wasn't a one-off thing. That is a permanent thing. Whenever she's not doing what they want, they just go... Ooh. And then the president was like, oh, yes, I will. I have changed my mind. It's so obvious. Like, even the vice president must notice that that was very obvious. The way she changed her mind with barely any thought. The way she changed her mind so wholeheartedly, just sat down and signed it. If that happens too many more times, he will notice. Now, the fact that the president was ill, is he, like, killing her? Because I think he's the head of the Cam Camarilla, or if not, he at least agrees with what they're doing. Um, is he going to, like, kill the president so he can take control and this, he's not being puppeted by the by Aldo and everything? It's very stressful, but they have authorised the testing. And I do agree that we think we do need to do this widespread testing because there are people hunting down these women and killing them. So you'd want to know if it was your... if you were going to be hunted down. The horrible thing is that they're all going to be conscripted <laughs> and they don't have the years of brainwashing and or at least they haven't lived their whole life preparing for it it's going to be a lot but tally's friendship with oh, the vice president's daughter whose name i've forgotten again um i really really enjoy that she's helping her and in a way showing her that she can approach the work to, for now at least slightly differently she can do it through music and through the her past life can help her flourish in her new life and i love that so yeah, this was a brilliant episode as always. A reminder that you can find the unedited version on my Patreon. I'm not entirely sure, I don't know if anyone even watches this far, if you do, hello. I'm not entirely sure if this reaction will be up on Wednesday next week because it is my mum's birthday, but I will be getting it up Wednesday or Thursday. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.